Hi, this is Dr. Cook, your Chem 240 instructor. Let's take a look at the next video. In this video, we're going to talk about hydroboration and hydrogenation of alkenes. These are also addition reactions, however, the mechanism is slightly different than the typical electrophilic additions that we've been talking about so far. So one of the questions that comes up for a synthetic chemist is, how do I change the normal selectivity or course of a reaction? Case in point is this reaction. We know if we take one butene and react it with water in the presence of an acid catalyst, we will generate an alcohol on the secondary carbon. That is, the acid catalyst will generate the most stable carbocation, protonation occurs on the end, water is added to that plus charge to form the new bond to oxygen, and then it gets deprotonated to reform the acid catalyst and put the alcohol on the secondary carbon. But as a synthetic chemist, I don't want to be limited to just making this product. What if I wanted one butanol as a target for my synthesis? How do I change the selectivity for this reaction? Well, the way to think about that is to think about changing the type of reaction that's happening. In this normal mode of reaction, something plus is adding here and something minus or that something with electron density is adding here across the double bond. One way to think about doing that is using other kinds of reagents. One reagent is what we refer to as a borane. It's a boron, which is just to the left of carbon on the periodic table. It's electron deficient. It forms three bonds and it has an empty orbital. So a borane compound has a boron and hydrogen bond and those add across a double bond to put the boron, which is the plus part, on the less substituted carbon and the hydrogen on the most substituted carbon, as I've illustrated here in this generic example. The nice thing about boron compounds is under the right conditions, we can oxidize that. We can replace the boron with an OH group by using a basic solution of hydrogen peroxide. This is a really nice tool then that allows synthetic chemists to be able to form a product which is not available by the direct addition of water under Bronsted acid catalysis. So borane does this reaction and we refer to this as an anti-Markovnikov hydration or anti-Markovnikov selectivity because it, it's essentially giving us the product of hydration that's opposite to what we would expect if we did it the normal way. is that it's not done in a stepwise fashion to do the hydroboration reaction. The, both the hydrogen and the boron are adding at the same time. So the pi bond of the double bond breaks. At the same time, the electrons in the hydrogen boron bond form a new bond. So this is what we refer to as a concerted reaction where they both add at the same time. As a consequence, if you have a ring compound, they add on the same side or what we refer to as a syn addition. Remember when we talked about halogenation with Br2, it was an anti-addition, they added on opposite sides. This is a syn addition, putting the hydrogen and boron on the same side. And thus when we exchange boron for oxygen, we can get the alcohol, oxygen, and the hydrogen adding on the same side of a ring. Well these hydroboration reagents, just for your information, uh, come in all types of different forms and solutions, but they all are basically BH3 borane. They can be complex to solvent molecules like tetrahydrofuran, which have oxygens in a Lewis acid, Lewis base complex, or they can be a dimer as in B2H6 in a solvent like diglime, which this solvent also has oxygens to help stabilize the boron. This is where we obtain our boron hydrogen sources and that's how we use them. They come apart and then react with our alkenes in the reaction vessel. This slide gives you a little bit better pictorial view of how the hydroboration works. So as I said, the boron is an electron deficient species. It has an empty p orbital. And as that empty orbital comes close to the electron density of the double bond, it starts forming a bond. It's partially bonded in this state. As it forms a bond, you can see that It'll slide over and the hydrogen will form a bond on one side, the boron will form a bond on the other. And one way to think about the anti-Markovnikov selectivity is to think about B plus adding to the least substituted side. However, there are other aspects to this as well, and that is the fact that boron is much larger than hydrogen, and so that will also add to the least substituted side of a double bond simply because of sterics. If you look at this particular example, you have a CH3 group here and a small hydrogen here. So if you're a borane molecule, which side are you going to put the big boron on? Yes, the side with the less steric hindrance as well. So it's also uh, partially responsible for the regioselectivity of hydroboration 
that being the size of the boron not interacting with other large groups. Well, to summarize all of these electrophilic addition reactions we've talked about, I want to think about this as sort of a, an equivalency exercise with some notes. I've sort of summarized all of these reactions here, where we can take things like hydrogen halide, that's the first one we talked about, and think about this as adding across a double bond, where we have something plus adding, this is what I refer to as A plus, or in this case H plus, adding first to form the most stable carbocation and X minus adding second. That gives normal Markovnikov selectivity and HX adds in this fashion. Water under acid catalysis does the same thing. We add an H plus first, that goes to the leaf substitute carbon and the equivalent of an OH minus. We know that it's water when it actually adds, but we're, I'm just thinking about conceptualizing the equivalency of what's left on the molecule at the end. Uh, that also adds in a Markovnikov fashion. Hydrogen, halide, water does that. Halogens also do that where instead of adding an H plus and an X minus, we're adding an X plus and an X minus. But in this case you have to be aware of the additional constraints on this reaction that it forms a bridge bromonium or chloronium species which results in anti-addition of those two groups as opposed to uh, forming a free carbocation. Borane, followed by then converting boron to OH, is a similar thing. We're adding H and OH, but in this case you can conceptualize this as thinking about this adding as an OH+, plus, which doesn't really exist. It's the boron that we're adding first and turning it into an OH. But you can think about this as adding OH+, plus to the less substituted carbon, and H- minus then to the more substituted carbon. Note that that adds at the same time, so it's a syn addition giving anti-Markovnikov selectivity. And then if we have other things which can add as well, such as mixing bromine and water, we can add a Br plus followed by an OH minus equivalent, and we can get the typical types of halogenation reaction, but now getting two different groups on. Again, for this class, don't worry about this. We're not going to have this on any exam or anything, but if you're interested in how the chemistry works, it's very much similar to adding Br2, where we add to make a bridge bromonium followed Br- minus at the end. Another addition reaction is the addition of hydrogen across a double bond. And this is actually not a very easy process. If you simply mix an alkene with H2, nothing happens. And that's because the hydrogen molecule is relatively stable. It's not polarized. It's a very inert type of material. In order to get this reaction to occur, we need to find some way to break the hydrogen-hydrogen bond. It doesn't just automatically polarize itself to form an H plus and H minus. That doesn't happen. So the way to do this is to think about using a catalyst. And hydrogenation catalysts come in many different flavors and different sources. They are typically transition metals that are used to help activate and break apart the hydrogen-hydrogen bond and template the reaction for the addition across a double bond. The most common of these is palladium. Palladium, oftentimes you get these metals in their zero oxidation state from the transition metals area of the periodic table. They're usually bound on some solid substrate. Most commonly used is palladium on carbon or charcoal as the solid substrate. What happens is that palladium on carbon first interacts with the hydrogen to break it apart. So you'll notice we've broken the hydrogen-hydrogen bond and bound the hydrogens to the palladium metal itself. Once that happens, then the hydrogen is activated, the double bond can come in, and that hydrogen can be delivered back to the double bond and the palladium goes back to the form it was before as a palladium catalyst. What exactly is the definition of a catalyst? A catalyst is defined as something that increases the rate of the reaction. It provides a lower energy pathway for a reaction to proceed. So it lowers a reaction energy barrier, yet remains unchanged in the reaction. That is, the catalyst you start with ends up at the very end of the reaction being unchanged. We add palladium zero at the beginning, we at the end we get palladium zero. If we do acid catalysis, like I showed in the hydration reaction, you add phosphoric acid at the beginning, you have phosphoric acid in the end. Nothing has changed, it's just lowered the energy barrier to find a pathway for the reaction to occur. That could add multiple steps, but it doesn't matter. Ultimately, if you get to the final product at a lower energy pathway, it will go that way. The other aspect of hydrogenation is that if you have, again, a double bond which could then form either cis or trans products, hydrogenation occurs with the addition of the hydrogens on the same side, or syn addition, 
of those. So the only product in this case formed when we take this molecule and react it with hydrogen with a platinum catalyst is the cis product. The trans product is not formed. And that's because the addition of hydrogen is actually templated by the metal catalyst. So this solid metal catalyst delivers the hydrogens from the same side to provide a selective product or a syn addition. The take home thing to remember here is that hydrogenation with metal catalysts produce cis or syn addition of hydrogen across a double bond. We can see that in this more complicated structure where we have a double bond and the hydrogens that I've shown here in red were added by this nickel catalyst on the same side of the molecule. Actually it happens also on the bottom side not the top side because the top side is more crowded and hydrogen with the metal catalyst comes from the more open face. So there's some selectivity even there with regards to which side of a double bond the hydrogen comes to, the less crowded side or face of that double bond. And we can use hydrogenation reaction to actually probe the properties of molecules because we can calculate the energy, because we can measure the energy that's released upon hydrogenation. We refer to this as the heat of hydrogenation and compare different isomers. And it is these types of experiments that allow us to directly measure the difference in energy between alkene isomers. One butene, for example, contains the most energy because it releases the most energy when you hydrogenate. It's the least stable. Lower in energy would be an internal double bond. It's more substituted. And then the cis is higher in energy than the trans. It is these kinds of experiments that we can directly measure the differences in energies of isomers.